Now we are joined by our first finalist for the Student Athlete of the Year Scholarship Competition brought to us by the Friends of OCM. Uh, we make the scholarship available uh, to all of the Oshkosh High School's seniors, athletes. Um, and we've gotten a lot of applications. We've narrowed it down to six student athletes and you'll see them on a few episodes of Oshkosh Today to kind of tell us a little bit more about themselves and why they deserve to be crowned the 2017 Student Athlete of the Year right here in Oshkosh. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce our first finalist. Her name is Reagan Beyer and her assistant golf coach, Nick Brandle. So thank you both for joining us today and welcome. Yes, thank you for having us. Yes, it's great to have you, our first finalist of the year. So thanks for joining us on this freezing cold December day as well. <laughs> it was quite a walk in. Yes, yeah, definitely. Well, Reagan, uh, first, I guess, before we get into the, the nitty gritty, kind of just give us a little bit of an overview about yourself. What sports, um, what sports are you involved in? Since my freshman year of high school, I've played golf, basketball, and soccer. Mm -hmm. And golf is kind of prim my primary sport. It's like what I'm best at, and it's what I really enjoy. It's my true passion. Mm -hmm. And I got into it when I was around eight years old because my dad's a high school golf coach. And so he just kind of got me into that and just kind of started this whole train of practice, 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 and more practice. Yeah, well, you were lucky to have a built-in golf coach. Yeah, it was very nice. <laughs> <laughs> and you said you're also uh, a basketball athlete and soccer. Soccer. So mm -hmm. those are also sports that you're involved in throughout the year, too. So yep. that's a lot, a lot of athletics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> and Coach Brandel, you've had the pleasure of working with Regan um, as her coach. And so tell us a little bit about what you can say about her as an athlete? Oh, she's a competitor, uh, very level-headed. Um, she's not going to get too high, too low. Uh, you know, if she comes in with a great score, um, you know, she's not going to get a big head about it. And if something bad happens, she's not going to let it uh, drag her down for a long time. She'll just work at getting better. Uh, leadership over the years um, has improved. Starting out, it was, you know, kind of tough as a freshman, you know, to come in with that kind of success. Um, but the younger kids now look up to her emulator a little bit um, you know maybe not you know vocal leader but you know leading by example and I, I think it speaks a lot when the younger kids aren't afraid to go and talk to you know an, an older athlete an upperclassman to ask a lot of questions and she's she's there to give answers it does say a lot and I think it, it is tough for the younger kids to kind of come up to an upperclassman because it's intimidating you know mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure you felt that as a freshman so you yeah. kind of know how it feels so that's that's great to hear um, and keeping a level head, I like that point as well, because golf is a very mental sport. Yes. So how have you kind of developed that skill as a golfer? Just from playing for such a long amount of time, I've just gotten used to like, everyone's going to have a bad round, so you just kind of have to expect it sometimes. Mm -hmm. And when it does come, you just have to make the best out of it and save every stroke that you can, because every stroke does matter. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I think people forget that sometimes. Yes, <laughs> it, it really does matter. Mm -hmm. um, and in your essay portion of your application, mm -hmm. you described a, a major challenge that you went through your junior year of high school. Maybe you can tell our viewers a little bit about what that was. Yeah, so actually during my sophomore year of high school, I injured my right hip, and we kind of thought it would just kind of go away after a couple weeks, but I continued having pain for almost a year. And so we finally went to a doctor and we ended up at a specialist in Milwaukee who basically told me that I had hip dysplasia and that I would need surgery to correct it. And so in March I had the surgery and they told me it would be about a six month, re six month recovery. Mm -hmm. So actually just now, about a month ago, I was cleared. Oh my gosh. Well, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> but that's a big, um, a big thing to overcome, yeah. you know, not only mentally but physically. And I mean, what kind of thing, what kind of thoughts went through your head as you were going through this and, you know, with your athletics and yeah. how everything was going to work out? Well, prior to this, I had never injured myself. So I guess I really never knew how much it took to recover and get back to a competitive, like, nature. Mm -hmm. But so just running through my mind was how much work is this actually going to be? And I guess I wasn't really prepared for how much work it actually was because I actually, like, didn't prepare myself for not being able to put weight through my leg and having to regain all the strength that that causes you to lose. Mm -hmm. And so just a lot of physical therapy two times a week, I would continue and I would do my everyday exercises at home. So it just took a lot of commitment. Yes, yes. And I think you also mentioned how hard it was for you to be able to depend on other people as yes. such an independent person. Yeah. That's a, a major thing to adjust as well. Yes, everyone has kind of like always known that I'm an individual person and I like to do things my way and like myself. And so just reaching a new state of dependency is something completely unknown to me. 
And so just going through that was a major life lesson. And now I know that I can rely on other people and it just made me a better person. Yeah. Well, what a cool story. How it, I mean, it's it's very unfortunate that you had to go through that, but it just goes to show everything kind of happens for a reason and how much you learned from it. Mm -hmm. um, now, you're you're an athlete in three different sports. You're a straight A student and um, that's just a huge commitment. And you've got other things going on, too. Mm -hmm. Give us a little bit of uh, background on some of the other fun things that you're doing throughout the year. Um, I really love our O'Neill National Honor Society at Oshkosh West. It's basically, if you have the grades, you qualify. And our leader helps us like with volunteering throughout the community, so we participate in different events. We recently just did the Race for the Lights, and we do the Polar Plunge. And so it just get, really gets you involved within the community, and I really enjoy that because I do volunteer, but a lot of the organizations that O'Neill works with are things that I don't normally associate with, so just being able to get in with different organizations is really cool. Yeah, you enjoyed the polar plunge? <laughs> I didn't actually plunge, oh, okay. I just raised the money. I was too I'm chicken. I'm always very <laughs> impressed when people can say that they've done that, yeah. but yeah, I would be on the back end of the background mm -hmm. of that too. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, as one of Regan's coaches, you not only work with her as an athlete, but you also see a lot of the personality development and uh, the, you know who your players are as a person. Uh, what can you say about the development that you've seen Regan make over the years that you've known her as a person? Uh, definitely come out of her shell since her freshman year. Um, and I know uh, Coach Powers, the head coach, said on your trip to Madison, you said two words <laughs> the entire ride down. Yeah. Um, and now in van rides, it's kind of tough to get her to stay quiet uh, <laughs> being a leader. But um, she really, I mean, you look at, like you said, uh, 4.0 student, all the stuff that she does, all the stuff that's on her plate. I mean, we're we're all going to be working for her someday, is what I always <laughs> tell people. Um, I know she doesn't think that the end of the school year is going to—it's it's never going to get here. But these next six months are going to fly by, and uh, she's going to, you know, do us proud after high school as well. She's going to do, you know, whatever she wants. Mm -hmm, definitely, it's always great to hear all these great things from your coaches, and uh, you know what a what a great effect you have on the people around you. Uh, plans after graduation? Any any specific colleges that you're applying to? Or are you going to continue in your sports? Um, I think that continuing in sports, I'm just going to do intramurals, but my top school is UW-Madison, mm -hmm. where I would like to major in biochemistry, and then eventually go on to PA school. Oh, wonderful. Oh, two of my best friends are PAs, so <laughs> I would recommend it, and that's a lot of work. So best of luck to you. Thank you. And um, well, thank you both so much for joining us today. It's, it's great to have the student athletes in Oshkosh come in, and very impressive background, Regan. So thank, thank you. you so much for joining us. Yes, thank you for having <laughs> us. Oshkosh Today was supported in part by the Friends of OCM. And Aurora Healthcare, 855 Northwest Haven Drive. Set design provided by House of Flowers, 1920 Algoma Boulevard. Oshkosh Today, 